I'm here today with a 2022 Hummer EV Edition 1, about to do the inside EV's 70 mile an hour highway range test with the Hummer. Uh, no, I'm not here with the Hummer EV. <laughs> Let me explain. Those of you that are familiar with the Inside EV's 70 mile an hour highway range test series know that I always start these videos standing next to the vehicle while it's DC fast charging up to 100% before I hop out onto the highway and start the range test. However, with the case of the Hummer EV, I can only get one in Detroit. I live in New Jersey where I usually do these range tests. So I am just about ready to leave for the airport, fly into Detroit to get the Hummer EV tonight to start the range test tomorrow. Now I'm not familiar with the traffic patterns in Detroit or in really in Michigan because I'm gonna be driving it west from Detroit. So I wanna start really early in the morning. I'm gonna get up about four o'clock get that thing on the DC fast charger by 4.30 so I can start the range test by about 5.30 in the morning and beat the morning rush hour. It's gonna be dark then, so I can't do the intro that everybody's used to. And that's why I'm doing it here at my home as I just about leave for the airport. In any event, the next time you see me, I'm gonna be in the Hummer talking about what we do to set up the vehicles for inside EVs 70 mile an hour highway range tests. Now, if this is your first time here, please don't forget, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. Okay, so we're cruising along at 70 miles an hour in the Hummer EV first edition. And I always like to talk a little bit about what we do to set the vehicles up when we do these range tests here at Inside EVs, because we follow the same methodology every time we do a range test to try to control as many factors as we can. Now, there's things we can't control, but we at least control the things we can, and then we talk about the things we can. So I set the tires, at the manufacturer's suggested tire pressure yesterday when the tires are cold. We then DC fast charge the vehicles up to 100% right before we start the range test. I did that this morning with the Hummer. Uh, we also set the climate control to somewhere between 68 and 70 degrees, whatever it takes to make us comfortable here. Uh, it's, a, it's not a super hot day today. It's 70 degrees out, so I actually have the uh, climate control set to 70 degrees and on fan setting one, the lowest fan setting there is. We put the vehicles in the most economical driving mode. In case of the Hummer EV, that's just normal driving mode. There's no eco driving mode. <laughs> There's nothing eco about the Hummer EV. This thing is a beast. It's not the first time I've driven it, but it's just hilarious every time I get into it because it's just such a hulking monster going down the road. I know it's electric, but it really, the, the whole driving experience is similar to the original Humvee, that it's just so ridiculously huge and dominating when you're barreling down the road. It's just that the, the Hummer EV does it a little bit quieter. <laughs> so uh, other than that, it's it, it, it feels like the original Humvee, which I've driven. You know, you're just, you're sitting up really high. Everybody looks at you when you're driving. It's a mile wide. I can't even reach the window on the other side of the vehicle. It's it's just, it. this is for people that want everybody to look at them. You know, and I, I don't mind getting some attention from time to time, but I don't know if I would want this as a daily driver, to be honest with you. I'm happy with my Ford Lightning. I have a Ford Lightning. Uh, and, uh, you know, that gives me everything that I would want out of a pickup truck, uh, powerful, long range and so forth. But we're here to talk about the Humber EV today. And uh, I mean, I love driving it and I'll drive one every opportunity I can. I just don't know if this is the daily driver for me. Well, enough about me. So let's get back to the range test. Uh, some of the things we can't control, topography. Uh, I'm out in Detroit. I picked a route that I thought would be the flattest route. We wanna make sure that the route is relatively flat. We don't want a lot of elevation change. I'm driving on uh, 94 West and the, the whole trip, somewhere around Ann Arbor is where I started and I'm, I'm gonna make the loop, I think, in Kalamazoo. Uh, maybe I'll go a little bit further. It depends on, on how things are going. But um, 
we always drive in loops to offset any possible elevation change, but we always pick out routes that have no more than a couple hundred feet of elevation change. And in this whole trip that I'm gonna be taking, it's not more than I think 200 or 225 feet of elevation change up and down. So it's, it's a pretty good route for us to take. Uh, we also look at the wind that's going on that day. And I have a couple of wind apps that check that. And the wind's not great today. We're, we're getting about 10 mile an hour wind from the Southwest. So that's gonna be a little bit of a factor, hopefully not too much. Um, I like to have the wind at less than five miles an hour when I do these range tests, but we can't control that. And it's not terrible. I've done range tests in, in higher, more windy conditions. And uh, I, I know once we get up over 10 miles an hour towards uh, 12, 13, 14 miles an hour, it really does have an effect. Um, but it feels like the Humvee will just go through anything. Like I'm worried about wind. This thing can drive through a house. It's 9,000 pounds. The battery is 3,000 pounds, a little bit less than 3,000 pounds. My first car that I bought myself was a 1985 Honda CRX SI. And that weight, if I recall correctly, I think it was like 1,942 pounds. So this, the battery in the Hummer weighs one and a half times what my entire car weighed. Uh, so that's let you know the, the, the size and the, the just sheer craziness of this vehicle. It has a usable capacity, the battery that is, of 212.7 kilowatt hour. The total capacity has got to be around 230. I don't know if GM actually released that, but I know the usable capacity is 212.7. And the EPA range rating is 329 miles per charge. Now to get that, I think I'd only have to average uh, somewhere around 1.35 miles per kilowatt hour. I didn't do the math on that, but I know I have to average 1.4 miles per kilowatt hour to hit 300 miles in this range test. I doubt if I'm gonna hit the EPA range rating, but you never know, we've been surprised before. I think if I average 1.42 or something like that, it's 300 miles. And so far, we're actually averaging a little more. We're averaging 1.5. So that would push us up close to 320 miles, which would get us really close to the EPA range rating, the combined EPA range rating. The driving experience in this thing is crazy. Um, the wind isn't that great. The wind noise is what I'm talking about. It would be nicer if it was a little bit quieter in here, but I know it has this um, giant infinity roof with all the removable panels. So there's a lot of gaps and stuff that air can get into. So it's not nearly as quiet as the F, uh, 150 Lightning is, but uh, that, that does have a panoramic glass roof, but it's solid. It's not removable like what we have here in the Hummer EV. Okay, so um, what else have I not talked about? We talked about tire pressure. Um, oh, speedometer. We always check the speedometer to be at, um, G by GPS to be true. In the case of the Hummer, it was correct. 70 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour. So we have the uh, Super Cruise locked in at 70 miles an hour and I'm cruising along. We're gonna check back at 75% uh, state of charge, 50% state of charge, 25% state of charge, and then the final wrap up. But one thing I do need to note, there is no numeric a state of charge indicator anywhere in the vehicle. I haven't been able to find it. Maybe it's buried somewhere in settings, but I haven't been able to find it. And it's certainly not on the display screen. On the display screen, all we get are these 10 bars that gradually erode as your state of charge goes down. So I'm gonna be guessing 75% and 25%. I should be able to get 50% perfectly because that's right when one of the bars erodes, um, we're at 50%. So we'll see how it goes. I should be able to get close to those uh, state of charge points when I mention the amount of miles we're at, but uh, unless I find something somewhere in the settings that I'm missing, this, uh, the Hummer EV does not tell you numeric state of charge, which bothers me a lot in EVs. And uh, the Bolt EV doesn't do it either. So maybe it's a GM thing. Maybe they just don't include any type of numeric uh, state of charge anywhere in the vehicle, which is a huge uh, problem in my opinion. You know, maybe if everybody doesn't want to stare at that on the state of, on the main driver screen, have it somewhere in the settings that you can turn on if you want it, turn on if you don't like it. Give people the option to have a numeric state of charge indicator somewhere in the vehicle. Uh, I don't understand why GM doesn't do that. In any event, uh, well, that's it. We're going to check back at 75% state of charge. We'll see how far we've gone. Checking in at 75% state of charge. 
At least I think it's 75% state of charge. I may have jumped the gun and gone a little earlier. It might be like 77 or 78% because uh, as I mentioned earlier, there was no numeric state of charge indicator and I'm trying to tell by the eroding bars exactly where I am. And uh, I think I'm close to 75%. In any event, we have gone 78 miles. That's pretty good. That would give us more than 300 miles in this range test if we were to repeat that in the final three quarters of the test. Our consumption rate is 1.5 miles per kilowatt hour. And uh, for our European friends, that's 41.33 kilowatt hour for every uh, 100 kilometers. So it's not an efficient vehicle, but nobody expected it to be. But what surprises me is well, I won't say surprise me. I'm a little surprised uh, that it's that low. I thought I was going to get somewhere like 1.75 or something like that uh, miles per kilowatt hour. 1.5 is brutal. Uh, you know, my F-150 Lightning, for instance, has uh, you know, almost 600 horsepower, 800 pound-feet of torque. It only weigh it only weighs 6,600 pounds. <laughs> it doesn't weigh 9,000 pounds, so that's where the inefficiencies are. But I can average over two miles per kilowatt hour uh, on a constant 70 miles an hour. I've done a few tests with it so far. I'm somewhere between 2.1, 2.2 miles per kilowatt hour. So this is significantly less efficient. I guess no surprise. I just thought it was going to get a little closer to two miles per kilowatt hour. In any event, that's where we're at at uh, first check-in. We're going to check back in at 50% state of charge, and we'll talk about where we're at and where I think we might finish up. All right, with a 50% state of charge point, we are halfway home, and we have gone 170 miles. So if we use my 75% state of charge measurement at 78 miles, that means we'd have gone 92 miles in this leg. But the more I think about it, and the more I study the display here on the Hummer EV, I think I jumped the gun. I think I was giving that number when we were at like 77 maybe percent state of charge. It was dark. I started early in the morning. It wasn't daylight yet. I wanted to try to beat the rush hour traffic so I know I could drive 70 miles an hour. And at night, it's hard to tell with the glow of the lights exactly where you are. But now that it's daylight, I can see there's 10 bars that make up 100% state of charge. And each bar has 10 little lines in it. So now I can kind of see where we should be at. So rather than say 78 miles for the first leg and 92 miles for the second, I'm gonna just split it in half and say 85 miles for each one because it's been relatively consistent as we've been driving. So. 85 miles from 100 to 75, 85 miles from 75 to 50. We're at 50% 50 state of charge. We've driven 170 miles. We have a consumption rate of 1.6 miles per kilowatt hour. And that's been jumping between 1.5 and 1.6 the whole time. And unfortunately, GM only gives you one digit past the decimal point. I really wish it was two digits so we would know if it's 1.58 or 1.51 or 1.61, uh, but they don't give you that. So that's best we could do is, is, is just say 1.5 and 1.6. When I get an opportunity to talk to a GM rep, I'm going to ask them how that's done or maybe they could find out for me exactly. Do they round up when it's 1.55 or do they not turn it to 1.6 until it actually hits 1.6. And that's important, especially when we convert it over to kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers driven. Uh, and now we've dropped down to 38.75 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers driven. And if we had more precise measurement, it would be a little bit clearer and would know exactly what the consumption rate was. And anyway, I'm going on a little bit too much about consumption rates here. Uh, the Hummer is really, uh, as I said earlier, it's such a beast. Every car that drives by looks at me uh, and some of them slow down because obviously most people pass me when I do these range tests and everyone's slowing down, looking at, looking at it. I even had a truck blow their horn and wave. So this thing commands attention as I expected it would. And it should because it's it's really, I think it's a good looking vehicle. I just think it's crazy that it's 9,000 pounds. I mean, that's just 
nuts. I, I wouldn't want to be on the other end of an accident with this thing, especially if it's going fast. Uh, the, the, you know, the mass, the force of hitting another car is, 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 is not going to be fun, especially if it's a little car. Anyway, for such a heavy vehicle, it doesn't have good payload and towing capability. The towing is only 7,500 pounds and the payload's 1,300 pounds. For such a big truck, heavy truck, it's, it's surprising that it's so low. There's, there's, there's plenty of pickup trucks, just standard, even mid-sized pickup trucks that can do better than that. In any event, I don't think people buying the, the Hummer EV are buying it uh, as a work truck. I mean, this is a lifestyle vehicle. This is, as I said earlier, hey, look at me. But um, it is what it is. It's a fun vehicle to drive. Don't know if I'd want it as a daily driver, but I'll take it every time I can get it on loan. I haven't had the opportunity to use the crab walk or the, really the four wheel steering much because these range tests are just hop in it, get to 70 miles an hour and just keep driving at 70 miles an hour. No fun. Watch everybody pass you. Uh, but I have done the crab walk before on, on a first drive event and it was pretty wild. Uh, it's just such an unnatural feeling when you're looking forward, but the vehicle's moving like sideways it's uh if you have the opportunity to just test drive one of these i think it would be worth your while to check it out so um, i'm getting a notice here that i may not make my destination i'm, I'm cutting it close the vehicle does say what it did say one percent state of charge i have 46 no 50 miles remaining and the estimate the miles estimator here does say 70 miles so it's weird that in the the navigation it's saying that i'm going to be pretty much running out when i get there one percent state of charge but there's about a 23 mile discrepancy between my destination and what the vehicle says the remaining range is we'll see uh as we get closer if that converges or if uh if i could just drive further than uh the destination but in any event uh, we're on course for over 300 miles, well over 300 miles. Uh, I'm going to guess that we're going to end up with right around 320. And um, fantastic result if we do hit that. The, the EPA range rating, the combined EPA range rating is 329 miles. So if we get close to that with uh, this vehicle, that's pretty good. All right, we'll check back at 25% state of charge and we'll see where we're at. All right, we're at the last check-in before the range test is over. We're at 25% state of charge, and we have now traveled 258 miles. That's amazing. So we went 88 miles in that last leg from 50% down to 25%. Fantastic. Uh, our consumption rate is holding steady now at 1.6 mile per kilowatt hour. It's pretty much locked into that now. It hasn't been fluctuating up from 1.5 to 1.6 as it did on the first half of the range test. We're pretty much locked in at 1.6 mile per kilowatt hour now. now. If that holds, we're gonna get really close to the EPA range rating of 329 miles because the, I mean, the Hummer EV has a usable capacity of 212 kilowatt hour. So if I can use most of those, we're gonna get close to that EPA range rating. We might even beat it. Um, I don't know uh, about that, but uh, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna use as much as I can without running out. I don't want a repeat of the Chevy Bolt EV range test where I'm stuck on the side of the highway waiting for a, rain, a tow truck to come. And uh, I'm in Detroit, I'm not at home. So uh, I'm kind of unfamiliar with the area. I definitely don't want to end up calling a tow truck around here. But uh, I tell you, <laughs> this is really a pleasurable drive. It's so fun watching everybody wave at me as I go along. Everything about this is just big and in your face. The Hummer EV is so big, it needs three windshield wiper blades. <laughs> well, that's also because the windshield isn't tall. It's a short windshield, but still, it looks so weird when you have three wiper blades wiping. I, when I arrived last night to pick up the vehicle, it was raining, so I had it on, and it just looks so weird seeing three wiper blades wipe back and forth in front of you. But, um, you know, 1,000 horsepower, 1,200 pound-feet of torque, 
this thing is just nuts. I wish I could drive it more spiritedly, but on the range test, I'm just locked in with Super Cruise and cruising along. We're doing really well here. We're gonna end up at over 300 miles. How far over 300 miles, I don't know, but we are going to check in when we get to the Ypsilanti. I believe I pronounced that right. Ypsilanti, Michigan, Electrify America DC fast charging station. That's where I started the test. That's where I'm gonna finish. We always like to drive in loops to offset elevation, to offset any particular wind, which by the way, has been maintaining nine to 10 miles an hour the whole day. So I was hoping that would die down, it didn't. Um, uh, it's nine to 10 miles an hour, but I tell you this, the, 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 the Hummer's just saying to itself, I don't care about any little wind, I'm just gonna push it out of the way and go 300 miles in this range test, and it's going to. Well, we'll check back in when we're at Ypsilanti, and we'll see how far we've gone. Okay, well, we're not there just yet. Uh, but one thing I wanted to point out was I just put the Electrify America DC fast charging station in the nav as my destination. And I forgot that the Hummer EV will automatically start to precondition the battery. Now, I don't want it to do that because I wanna use all the energy I can for this range test. I'm gonna do a charge recording right after, so I would like the battery to be preconditioned, but if I allow it to do it now, it's gonna take away some of the range. So I'm gonna drive it down to zero, charge it up to like maybe 25%, then drive it again, set the DC fast charge station as my destination, let it precondition, so that way I get a good charge recording with the maximum power the vehicle can take in. So what I have to do now to shut this off is I go to the home screen, then into the energy section, then you'll see it says DC fast charge battery conditioning, and underneath it, it says in progress. I have to tack that and then stop battery preconditioning. And now, it has stopped. So now we are no longer preconditioning the battery and I'm getting sprayed by a truck in front of me is spraying some water out of it. I don't know what's going on. Let me move over. Um, so yeah, so now I've stopped the battery preconditioning. I'll start it up again before I do the DC fast charge test, but I don't want to use that energy and take away some of the miles that the Hummer EV is going to do in this range test. Okay, we're here at the Electrify America DC fast charging station where we started early this morning and we finished up with 343 miles driven. We crushed the combined EPA range rating of 329 miles and actually could have probably went two or three miles more. Now, as I hoped wouldn't be the case was the case. When we get down to a very low state of charge with the Hummer EV, just like the Bolt EV and EUV, GM takes away the remaining estimated range and it just blinks low. I noticed it seemed like once it got down to about 4% state of charge. But you still have those little bars, but now they're blinking and as they go down, I could see when I was getting down to the end. I also had the address here in the navigation system and it had a state of charge number listed there. So I was going by that and I did enough loops to the point where it said we were gonna be arriving here with 0% state of charge, which we did. We pulled off the highway at I think it was 341 miles. It was about two miles to get to this uh, charging station here. We ended up with 343, but then when I turned the vehicle off, it did say we had 1% state of charge, even though the nav said zero, and three remaining miles. So if you wanna add those three miles onto the range test, that's fine with me. I wasn't gonna push it anymore. It didn't look like there were any blinking bars, and I wasn't gonna be getting this thing towed somewhere in Detroit. I've got a plane to catch in a couple hours. Anyway, great results. The Hummer EV did fantastically. I mean, this. This thing's, it's really an amazing vehicle. It's $110,000, so it should be a heck of a vehicle, and it really is. I mean, it's amazing how powerful it is with 9,000 pounds. When you just touch it, this thing just launches forward. The hood lifts up, and it roars, and that's not even in Watts to Freedom Mode. Watts to Freedom Mode is a whole nother thing. Well, that's a wrap. We did 343 miles. The Hummer EV did a fantastic job in the inside EV 70 mile an hour highway range test. If you like what we're doing here, please click the subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EV's YouTube channel. And as always, thanks for watching.